Hi guys, if you're new to my channel, it's me Cromwell. Please do like and subscribe. Thank you so much. For For today's video, we'll be talking about the different parts of a qualitative research paper. So these parts may be different to you, kasi depende naman yun kung anong ginagamit niyo. But for our uh, institution, we are using these different parts. So we have only four parts of a research paper. Number one is the introduction. So anong meron sa introduction? We have the rationale of the study, where the problematic situation is being uh, stated, followed by ang sinusundan ng uh, ando yun nung research gap, ando rin yung urgency of the study. After that, we have the review related literature. For our school, naka-embed na ang RRL kasunod ng uh, rational. And after the RRL, where, where all the related readings nakapaloob mga studies related to the topic or to the study, ando na yung purpose of the study. So, uh, for the purpose of the study, I suggest you use the format or the purpose statement of Cresswell. And on the internet, you just have to uh, substitute the necessary words that you need for your research. The next one is the research questions. What are the things that you want to answer after the conduct of your study? Um, basic na ginagamit namin yung tatlo, but for other schools, they're using fewer for their research questions but for us since for students only i'm using the basic depending on reasons the experiences or your coping mechanisms and you can add the insights if you want to have some things to be shared for others will be listening to the presentation of the research right after the study after that one the purpose of the study it's followed by what the significance, no, the theoretical lens of the study. It should be supported with an existing theory so that you can have a basis of your study. And if there's no theory that you can find, you can make use of propositions. So, at least three theories. If there's no theory, you can make use of propositions. It should be contextualized to your study para mas madaling ma -intindihan. Right after that, we have the significance of the study. Significance, you need to include the importance, the social value, and the beneficiaries of the study. And after that, we have the definition of terms. Ano yung mga words na naka conceptually and operationally defined in the study. And we also include the last one, the organization of the study. For chapter 2, we have the methodology or the method. Um, the first part of the method includes the research design. Ano bang ginagamit mo na research design? So, we're using qualitative research design. And commonly for my students, there are only two approaches that we use. The first one is the phenomenological approach and the other one is multiple case study approach. So, yun lang naman yung common sa kanila. Hindi kasi masyadong applicable yung ethnography. Grounded theory, medyo mahirap siya. So, after the research design, sa research design pala, kailangan mong i-discuss bakit yun ang gagamitin mo na research design. And after that one, you include the role of the researchers. What, or if, ikaw lang, role of the researcher. Ano ba ang gagawin mo? Ano ba ang roles na gagawin mo when doing the study? Transcriber, and a lot of things. After that one, we have the research participants. Research participants include the number of participants that you're going to interview. So according to Cresswell, ilan ba? Or depende kung sino author ang gagamitin mo. After research participants, you have also the sampling that you're going to use, the pre-inclusion criteria, and you include the pseudonym or anong gagamitin mo na mga pangalan in order for you to conceal the info, the identity of the participants that you're going to interview. It's a common misconception during the panel defense. Marami kasing nag na it should be more than 30, it should be 50 and above, but for qualitative researches, 
uh, pwede na yung 14, depende kung sinong author ka nakabase, as long as you can saturate the data that you need. Now, hindi kasi pwedeng sobrang marami kasi for qualitative research, we are not after of the generalization of facts of the data. We are only after of their experiences, the results, or the beauty of their experiences and how they cope with it if they have a lot of challenges. After research participants, you include what? The data collection. So the basic data collection that we use are in-depth interview and focus group discussion. Yun ang dalawa na pinaka-ginagamit natin. IDI, inuuna namin yung IDI followed by the FGD. For my students, they use seven participants for IDI or seven for FGD but depende kung kompleto yung lahat or kung susunod. Another one, after the data collection, we have data analysis. Common na ginagamit is content and thematic analysis. Kasi yun naman talaga. So, uh, in data analysis part pala, you need to discuss what is it and the process of doing that. So, it's important. Of course, you support that with authors. And after that one, you are going to discuss what? The trustworthiness. So, saan ba nakabase? Ano ba ang basehan na trustworthy? ang study. So, according to some authors, many authors, we have dependability, credibility, transferability, and confirmability. Apat yun. And lastly, for chapter 2, ang makita natin ay yung ethical consideration. So, for ethical considerations, lima yung ginagamit namin for quality research. We have the consent, the confidentiality, the respect for persons, the beneficence, and justice. So, yung app, limang yon ang ginagamit. Mostly, ang, ang ginagawa ng mga students ko is that they define those things. And after defining, um, uh, they contextualize it. How are they going to do or what are they going to do in their research? Chapter 3, we have the results. In the results, what we do is we discuss, we have an introduction. After the introduction, we present the profile of the participants for phenomenology. For phenomenology. For case study, iba rin yung format namin. Kasi we start with the interview results and then you present individually the different cases. Let's say for instance, you have five different cases or you have four cases or three cases. You present it or isang case lang that is for one chapter. So example, chapter one, intro, chapter two, method, chapter three, we have the interview results. Chapter 4, the case 1. Chapter 5, the case 2. So, ganun sa case study namin. For, for phenomenology, we have the results right away and the profile of the participants, the categorization of data. And the first table would be the experiences of the participants with the supporting details, supporting statements coming from the responses during the conduct of the interview. So, you're going to verbatimly discuss it relating to the different themes that you have identified. So, kailangan mo mag-identify ng iba't ibang themes. Usually, according to some authors, five themes will do. So, pero five to eight, sobra naman yata yung na, sampo. So, ganun. And followed by the coping mechanisms and lastly, the insights. You're going to present it step uh, logically okay and the next part is the last one the fourth chapter we have the discussion in the discussion part you're going to discuss and at the same time support the different results with authors so what we did is for every theme they need to support it with three authors recent authors na nagsasabi na ang kanilang result is the same with what with those that are being studied before so ganun ang ginagawa nila for chapter 4 and they also include the implications for practice and implications for further research so, lastly in chapter 4 we also include what the concluding remarks so in the concluding remarks it is based on 
you already. So those are the four different parts of a research paper and I hope you learned something from it and thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, you may you might want to ask ano ba yung mahirap na part sa research what's sa inyo ano ba ang basic research parts ng research paper niyo